Hey friends, in this video, I'm gonna talk about SQL set operators like intersect and accept to be able to go through to do your filters much easier just by using some basic SQL syntax. Let's get to it. My name is Austin Leibel and I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works and we do training on many different Microsoft products like Azure, like the Power Platform, Power BI, as well as SQL. You may have seen some of my other SQL videos before and if you haven't, definitely go check them out. But in this video, I wanted to introduce a really cool concept in SQL known as set operators that include things like intersect, accept, and union. Now, I want to mainly focus on the intersect and accept operators in this video and maybe have a union one in a future one, but want to show you how easy it is to go through and filter or combine your results based on how you can use these set operators. So to give you an idea of what these are, essentially in SQL, the set operator allows you to go through and combine results of two different select statements. So select star from this, where this equals this kind of concept, but two different SQL statements combined with one of these operators. So the operators allow you to perform these set operations, similar in theory of those in set theory, but this is going to give us a familiar concept with potentially using the uh, subqueries and uh, going through and using like some sort of subquery to equal one thing, a value in one table or another one. Uh, we've talked about those in previous videos, but subqueries can ultimately a bit, be a little bit non-performant and uh, can really slow down and cause uh, issues with a database performance. So instead, we could potentially use these set operators as number one, a much easier way to go through and do some filtering and it's number two, just a better performance on your SQL server or your cloud SQL database, which is awesome. So let's talk about them a little bit. I'm going to start with first with the accept operator. So I'm going to go through and use accept. Now, what are we going to be trying to use? I'm using the AdventureWorks database and I want to go through and I want to see from the sales.customer table, from the sales.customer table, I want to go through and see the customer ID. So we can return that. What I also want to go through and see is uh, from the sales dot sales order header table I want to see the customer ID as well so there's a relationship between these two tables we can see they are two different select statements right now I can execute them both at the same time by highlighting both of them and running them but these are two different queries one has returned 19,000 rows the other has returned 31,000 rows now you'll notice on the bottom here some of these customers are going to appear multiple times and this is essentially going to be like our fact table where customers gone through and purchased things from our company multiple times that's a good thing right the top one here is only going to have one of these each individual customer IDs per table this is essentially like a primary key on this table so there's only going to be one customer named Austin Libel he would appear one time with customer ID 745 or something like that right now if I wanted to go through and see where customers who have purchased a record are. I want to see the customers who have purchased something on this database. I could potentially go through and use a set operator to perform this. And all I would have to do is use these two different SQL queries and combine them with accept. So essentially, if I go through and say, I want to see everyone from the sales.customer table, except the ones who appear on the sales.sales order header table, I am going to be able to tell who has not purchased something. If this customer over here does not appear on my fact table, then they have not made a purchase from the AdventureWorks database. So let's go through and run this and see how many records we get back. 701. So 701 customers that are logged in my database just have never made a purchase before exist. Now that is the accept operator. The exact opposite of this would be the intersect operator. So I would be able to go through and see where customers have made a purchase from one record to another. So if I just modify this to say intersect now instead of accept, I can go through and see that there's 19,119 records that are appearing now on this SQL statement. And that makes sense, right? Because if we go through and run this again, we can see 19,820 over here at the bottom of my results. So that's going to say that there's 701 people who haven't made a purchase, 19,119 that have. That's an easy way you can go through and use these different set operators. Now, 
Well, let's look at another example that we could potentially use as well, just to help us better understand this, right? So I'm going to use the intersect operator to try and see which products have been sold or maybe which products have not been sold on my database. Another use case for wanting to go through and filter results using these set operators. So I'm going to go through and write out a SQL query. This time I'm going to pull over from the production.product table where I have a list of all of my products. I'll bring over the product ID as well as the name of the product just to give myself some context as to what we're looking at. And then I'm also going to go through here and use from the sales.sales uh, .sales order detail table. I want to pull over all the records where there's specific products that have been purchased. There it is right there. Uh, I want to use again the product ID as well as the name columns here. So again, looking at these two SQL statements that are run uh, separately from one another, oh, it's not the name there, uh, it's going to be something different. Uh, we'll go through and use this statement there. All right, so uh, this is going to allow me to go through and see all of the names of the products and the product IDs from one, and then also see the product IDs on another. Now I can go through and determine whether products have been sold or not using this same syntax. So I can say I want to intersect product ID from sales.salesorderdetail. But uh-oh, all queries combined using a union intersect or accept operator must have an equal number of expressions, essentially columns in their target list. So what I could potentially do is come over here and either get rid of the name column and say, you know what, it's not important, we'll figure that out later. And that would allow me to go through and generate my results or potentially create some sort of hard coded name column as well. But this tells me, hey, there's 266 records that have been sold. They're, again, they're intersecting, where the records from the product table intersect the records from the sales order detail table, which is, again, kind of like a fact table in this instance. Now, just the opposite of this, if I want to see only the records that have not been sold, only the products that have not been sold there, I would go through and use the accept set operator. All right, so hopefully this is a nice introduction. Again, there's not a lot to this. Once you kind of understand how these two different operators are going to function, you can go through and start filtering your data and saying, I want to see you know, where a customer has made a claim or I want to see where a uh, bank has failed or something like that. So we have many different ways we can return this information. This is one of the more simple ones for you. You could again use a subquery or many other different performant methods. Um, some of them are performant, some of them are not performant. If you've enjoyed this video, definitely go ahead and like and subscribe. Make sure you're getting all of the most up-to-date Pragmatic Work content coming to you. We have videos released multiple times per week. And if you're interested in some more training, go and check out our online uh, demand uh, application. You can go through and really learn how to go through and do anything inside of a Microsoft product. If you want to learn more about Excel, if you want to learn more about Power BI or Power Apps or Power Automate, we also have boot camps that we perform for live trading if you'd rather do that. Those are a lot of fun and can really help you scale up your knowledge very, very quickly. Definitely check for additional content coming out on our YouTube in the future around SQL and other topics for Microsoft. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. I'm excited to see you in the next one. We're going to keep talking about SQL. I'll see you there.